Carefree clip comes just days after a yacht steward filed a lawsuit against Christian, alleging he sexually assaulted her in December 2022. The victim in the case has produced audio recordings that allegedly shows forcing himself upon her and that he wouldn't take no for an answer. Back to the second most famous comms in the family, Christian Combs, who is known as King. How involved is King in his father's legal troubles? CNN listens to an audio where the victim alleges she was being forced to chuck down a tequila shot that she suspected was loaded with drugs. Tonight, more accusations against Sean Diddy Combs, and now one of his sons. A new 31-page lawsuit filed on Thursday details a trip in 2022 where the plaintiff alleges she was working as a stewardess aboard a yacht owned by Combs when his son, Christian, drugged and sexually assaulted her. The lawsuit alleges that an audio recording made during the night in question is evidence of the woman denying his advances as he gropes her. The plaintiff's lawyer provided those clips to NBC News. In one recording, a woman believed to be the alleged victim is heard saying, Excuse me, you don't touch my Please legs like that. I'll move my legs the way I want to. Uh, right. If I want to do this, then I will. <laughs> you don't touch my legs like that. Soon after, according to the lawsuit, Christian speaks and tries to get her to stay. Who can I talk to? I'm going to say you. Requ I requested you right now. Well, you can take your hand off my for the first thing. According to the lawsuit, the alleged victim then left the recording studio and attempted to resume her stewardess duties. But the suit alleges Christian found her again, this time asking her to find him a place to sleep. She claims she showed him to a cinema area, but instead of resting, she alleges in the suit that he became violent and wouldn't let her leave. He groped her, the lawsuit claims, took his clothes off, grabbed her arms, and tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. The woman claims she fought him off until someone else walked in. The lawsuit includes photos of a bruised forearm, allegedly the victims. As for Christian's famous father, the suit claims he turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion on his yacht into a hedonistic environment. And we all see Christian Combs being handcuffed during the raid on Diddy's house? Looks like Diddy's making his son handle his dirty work. I've seen the FBI raid criminals' houses in a less aggressive way, lol. A new video of the raid at Sean Diddy Combs' home in Los Angeles from the mother of one of his sons. This one, that son ended up in handcuffs. Agents also raided Combs' home in Miami last week. Here's some of the sped up uh, video from those raids. Criminal defense attorney Mark Iglarsh is based in Florida. He's standing by with his take on all of this. But first to chief correspondent Jonathan Hunt. Hey, Martha, we all saw the pictures of heavily armed agents from Homeland Security Investigations arriving at Sean Coombs' mansion here in L.A., but the first, for the first time now, we are seeing what happened inside. As the agents moved along the hallways, weapons drawn, guiding in, guided in part, it appears, by a drone. As they move in to detain two of Combs' adult sons, Justin and Christian, they have their rifles aimed at the pair. The edited video was posted on Instagram by Justin Combs' mother, Misa Hilton, who called the agent's actions overtly militarized and deplorable. Three states working in tandem, and they did not tell the officers who they were raiding. They went in tactical as they were instructed to. They didn't know they was raiding Diddy's house. The higher ups didn't tell anybody because they knew with Diddy being a, a, a fed informant that he had people in the force and they wanted to make sure that went through legit. So they ain't tell nobody whose houses they was going to. That's why you see the guns. The, the cops didn't know that it was Diddy's house over there in Beverly Hills around the corner from uh, uh, the Playboy Mansion. They didn't know until they seen the kids. To the, the raid real quick with Diddy. Mm -hmm. um, his sons were there and he was not there at the houses. Um, yeah. And he was, that was quiet. the worst part of that. Yeah, to see his sons being had. Do you force your kids to do your perp walk? That was, the, that was the worst part. And all I could think about was Kim and Misa. Mm. The girls. 
just her son. He, he left their son to be walked out backwards on camera for the world to see. Diddy spent three decades growing his empire for it to go up in flames just now. One of the most notable incidents occurred in 1999 at Club New York, where a shooting involving Diddy and his then-girlfriend J-Lo led to charges of illegal possession of a firearm. Days of deliberations, the jury now appears to be focusing on the gun possession and bribery charges against Sean Puffy Combs. This afternoon, jurors sent the judge two notes one of which asked for a transcript of a phone message Combs left Wardell Fenderson, once his driver, now the prosecution's star witness. During the trial, Fenderson testified that Combs was armed the night of the shooting at Club New York and later pressured him to claim ownership of a pistol police found when they pulled over Combs' Lincoln Navigator as it fled the shooting. And I just want to make you feel like comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Make your family feel comfortable. What exactly Combs meant by that is in dispute, but the prosecution claims the rapper offered Fenderson $50,000 or a diamond ring to take the rap for the gun. The jurors also wanted to hear a readback of testimony relating to Combs' former girlfriend, actress-singer Jennifer Lopez, who was in the Navigator when it was stopped by police. An officer testified that everyone in the SUV was ordered to put their hands on the vehicle, but Lopez walked away, saying she was going home. As she was being detained, a gun was discovered in the vehicle. At that point, a sergeant on the scene ordered everyone who was in the vehicle under arrest. The officer quotes Lopez as saying, it's not my gun. Not too long ago, Combs' ex Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against him with all kinds of allegations. Things got interesting because Combs' ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane, if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. Yep. And he was in that man's house and he saw that man's wife who was like this. I was watching Puff. And then Puff was looking at the. He saw this, this, this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, Yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the f kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what? so when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cass, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. What did you know back then, three, that four Cassie years was ago? gonna come forward. So what what did you how did you know what did you know about what cat cuz to, to hear I the could explain Yeah but... um but if I explain how I knew Cassie was going to come forward that could hurt some people. I don't spend time around Cassie and I haven't seen Cassie in person since she was with Brian Leslie. Was there something in her eyes that you saw the way like now I that I put it to you this way there are mutual acquaintances between her and I. Mm. And that's as far as I can go. Okay. Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him. Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have sex with her? It's something fishy about that, bro. Because you gotta realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the Diddy people was six months ago. So some of that stuff was cut out. We're gonna give you this. 
but you gotta cut this part out. Let's just say, allegedly, just for the sake of it, Cassie wasn't the only one who wanted, or she didn't want it, but Cassie who searched for the big black, and she was searching for the big black, not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the room with her. So if he wanna see it, and he want her to su touch it, he might, that other person in the room with her just might wanna feel it, allegedly. She said it's a freak off session. If she says a freak off session, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. Old boy is freaking off also. I think that, and, and me just being a trained investigator and reading through the lines of certain things. And one time I had read something that Cassie couldn't take it no more. She told her friend, and this was she she was under a non-disclosure and everything like that. She told her friend she couldn't take it no more because she had seen this dude do something. I've heard plenty of stories about him being on a, that same yacht that Kim was on and the same yacht she got her nose broken on that somebody was doing something when she, to him when they walked in the room and it caused a confrontation. This is what somebody who was on the yacht said to me. My whole thing about it was this. Anything in that lawsuit, you gotta realize that we only got a portion of it because it's been chopped up. Things has been taken out. So somebody wouldn't look a certain way. Cassie may have seen some stuff that she ain't really wanna look at. He didn't want her to know who they were. So if she ever wanted to do what she just did, how does she say who how the person look? All she could describe is they, if they was wearing masks, unless she saw them before they put the mask on. All these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts with him. There was a story that he was trying to get Chris Brown, those young boys that he had, a group B5 or something like that, trying to get them. Yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine, ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him, but he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN is keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. And if you're wondering what Diddy's doing now, he's smoking and dancing to music in his Miami mansion like the feds didn't even raid his house. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking and I'm like, you know, I'm about to go into this next era of my life. And um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, positive things. You know, a lot of disruptive things. Um, a lot of things I really don't want everybody like everybody to know about um so like on the gram everybody knows about everything you know i want a deeper connection with my fans so i came up with this idea i was going to get a special phone number and i was going to be able to give it to my family my fans everybody that's down with the movements that i'm about you know what i'm saying the team love movement you know bad boy you know black excellence entrepreneurialism getting money um vibrations, inspiration, and um, just special unique content that I'm going to share on this, on this phone. And also, on top of that, I'm also going to be able to be in communication with y'all. So when, you, and when I'm in your city, I'll be able to hit you directly. And also, I will be answering questions and talking to people and accepting resumes and, you know, giving information for parties. Man, I'm just going to give out my number. 917-746-1444. 917-746-1444. We've seen him apologize for the Cassie incident, but what about all the other claims against you, did? Darkest times in your life, sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, 
going to rehab. Had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. I guess we'll have to wait and see.